I'm Igor Kafetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, a podcast for those who want to build a large profitable email list and make six figures from anywhere in the world. If you would like to get rich by building a large email list while helping people, this podcast is for you. I also invite you to attend a free web class I'm conducting this week to find out how I built a list of 4,331,656 email subscribers at a profit. Secure your free seat at igor.cx. Attend this free workshop to discover an easy way to get 50 to 500 new email leads per day on complete autopilot without losing tons of money. Just go to igor.cx to attend this free web class. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the List Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafet. I recently read a fascinating story that reaffirmed what I already believe to be true and something that I've already told many, many times before in the podcast. And that is how your name, your presence, your authority, who you are, oftentimes dictates the results you're getting. It actually explains why two exactly the same people can promote the exact same product, the exact same offer, the exact same, uh, you know, uh, they can pitch the exact same thing, but one of them will be celebrated and they will make a ton of money and they will collect a ton of commissions and it will be very easy for them to make money. And the other person will struggle and nobody will so much as, you know, uh, so much as give them a second look. Nobody will pay attention to their offer. People will you know, be annoyed by being pitched by them and so on and so forth. It explains why someone like Mike Dillard can go and email their list and make, you know, nearly 500 sales for a high ticket offer, while someone else who has a list of, say, half a million people will email and get conversions of, say, just about you know, 0.001 of a percent. And so the difference oftentimes lies in this one concept of authority, the concept of who you are and how you're being perceived by the people who are seeing and engaging with your message. That is also why over time you will it does get easier to make money online because the 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 better the reputation you build for yourself, the more credibility you've got, and the more content you put out there, the more presence you've got there, the more you solidify your position as a trusted authority on the topic or subject that you're marketing at the better your results will be because the marketplace will be easier to agree with you even the people who don't know necessarily who never worked with you in other words even if somebody hasn't really bought anything from you but they were aware of your name and they've been kind of hearing your name for a couple of years and they know what you stand for at least you know on a very basic level you will have a much easier time and a much easier basically you will have a much better result um, moving forward compared to, you know, the results you've been generating, you know, 6, 12, 18, 24 months before that. And again, it comes down to, are you an authority, right? Which is also why it pays to be consistent with your messages. It pays to be consistent in the environment that you operate. That is why I never moved away from business opportunity marketing. I started out in network marketing. I started out, then moved into affiliate marketing where I found small success. Then I moved into information marketing. And from there, I stuck to the make money online industry. And I never really moved away from it. Like I never went into Bitcoin like some of my uh, joint venture partners. You know, they switched, um, you know, their persona from being just about, you know, making money online to being all about crypto. I never really dropped make money online and went into weight loss like some of the other uh, people that I worked with. Um, I've never moved away. Like I did move away from, say, product launches as a strategy, even though I did it successfully, you know, a couple of times. But I never really moved away from the core message in general and uh that is what helped me solidify my presence now um let me let me share this study with you let me share the story with you this is a true story and it truly illustrates why it's so important to build up your authority and why it's always always it always pays better if you market yourself first and i'm going to explain to you what that means in just a bit um it always pays better if you market yourself and not just kind of you know push out links to the universe. So basically, I want to take you back to about 1930s, right? This is when it actually happened. And during the 1930s, um, an author conducted an experiment. Okay, this this author took a novel 
and uh, he wrote this novel and he created two manuscripts identical with two words different like the only thing that was different about these manuscripts was exactly two words on the title of the manuscript and he took these novels to all the publishing houses that he knew that he was already working with and with one of them he took those novels under the real name his real name of jersey kaczynski and the other novel, he took it under the, the other name, the Elias name that he had, Eric Demos. Basically, the first name, right, was an already existing and established author, while Eric Demos was, uh, you know, a fake name of an author that supposedly, you know, wasn't, wasn't really famous and didn't have any work already published. And so what happened was really fascinating because when, when this person brought his manuscript under the name of Jersey Kaczynski to the publishing house, uh, to all the publishing houses, they started a bidding war to try and get to, you know, to publish this book. And he ended up publishing under Random House and winning the uh, National Book Award for that year. And then, you know, uh, he took the other manuscript, again, exactly the same, identical. He asked a friend to start taking it to different publishing houses. A couple of years later, okay, merely three years later, under a different name, and every single publishing house refused to publish the book. They didn't even read it. They just looked at the name and didn't read it, including Random House, the publishing house that published his previous books which you know they failed to recognize that it's the exact same book they already published they simply discarded it based on the name now what does that tell you it tells you that people will often decide on the credibility validity uh, authenticity uh, and relevance of your message based on nothing else but your name, your first and last name, based on your persona, based on your presence in the market. Which is why, you know, initially starting out, even if you are providing, say, a ton of testimonials to try and close the deal, right? Even if you are sharing tons and tons of case studies, people will look at those case studies with, with this lack of belief. Because anything that you do, because you lack the authority, will be perceived as untrustworthy it explains why starting out even if you have a perfect system even if you have um you know really just the best offer in the world it's still really really hard to make money because your authority and credibility is simply not there and today this is more important than ever this is way more important today than it was in 1930s because in 1930s the marketplace was not infested. The marketplace was not filled with garbage. The marketplace wasn't that competitive, although it may seem that way back in the 1930s. 1930s, all you had to do is quite literally open shop on a, a busy street and people will just buy from you. You know, the right people would find you and it'd be okay. Now, it, it got a little bit more competitive in the 60s and the 70s and so on, and today it's very competitive. But even then, it was super, super important to generate a brand, to, to have a name, to have credibility, have a relationship with the market, and to, to make sure that you're trustworthy like that. Yo, it's Igor. If you're loving the content, hop on over to lizbillinglifestyleshow.com for more free training and a free transcript of this episode. Oh, and I'd really appreciate if you logged into iTunes and rated the show. It really helps. Thanks. So how do you then build authority, right? Because that's probably what you're wondering right now. How do I, okay, I get that I need to be an authority, but how do I build that authority? Well, for one, one of the easiest things you can do to start building your authority, especially starting out, is telling stories and i've actually created the whole program around that where i educate you and show you the actual system you can use to write stories to create stories that support your message even if you're brand new and you can check it out at bridge.igorsolowets.com okay that's bridge.igorsolowets.com and one of the things about telling stories that's so critical when you're just getting started is that stories are not being challenged. Stories are not dry facts. Stories don't appeal to logic. Stories, they engage us on an emotional level. And the thing about human beings is that whatever they cannot recognize as an attempt to influence, they cannot resist. In other words, if you try to convince people to buy from you, 
without telling them a story starting out and you don't have uh, this credibility and authority already going for you, which is why they would listen to you in the first place, um, that would mean that they will actively resist every word you're saying. They will challenge every claim you're making. They will challenge every statement you're making. And even if what you're saying makes logical sense, emotionally, they will never accept what you're telling them at face value. You'll need to work really, really hard to convince them that you're telling the truth. You'll need to supply a ton of proof. And even then, they may act, but even then it's going to be a reluctant action that may backfire in the form of a refund request or a quick turnaround the next day when they don't see results or you know things of that nature. So as far as the stories are concerned, they allow you to sneak under those defenses. They allow you to sell without selling. They allow you to convey your message so it doesn't get rejected by the brain, by the logical part of the brain, and instead engage the emotional part of the brain and allow that message to sink in. So at that point, you become a trusted ally. Now, one of the ways that this has been used throughout centuries by pretty much every single major figure is, you know, uh, for example, a Mata Hari. So I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you actually know who that is, but she was this mysterious figure that uh, fascinated everybody pretty much. And she, she was famous for being fascinating. She was famous for being mysterious, right? So Mata Hari was actually just a normal average woman. She wasn't even all that pretty, but she mesmerized men. And one of the ways she did it was by making sure that the stories about her spread way before they met her. So by the time they met with her, she was already in that position of fascinating them by pretty much everything she was doing. So they were looking at her through the set of glasses of fascination. Same thing about Cleopatra, by the way. So Cleopatra is widely recognized by what, probably one of the greatest women in history. She ruled Egypt. She subdued the will of Roman empires, right? Actually, two of them. And she was very, very dangerous. Now, if, if you look her up, if you start reading about her, you'll know, you'll know that she didn't have any amazing beauty going for her. She was pretty average looking, but she was really good at manufacturing stories that by the time the Roman emperors got to meet her again, they were already looking at her with that fascination. So if you can create the same effect by telling stories, be it stories about you personally or stories about what you've done, or stories that, that, that are being um, said about you by other people, especially if those people are also authorities, then you will be able to create an aura uh, where by the time you ask for the sale, you, you will already be in a highly advantageous position of, of the prospect not resisting that message because they heard the stories before and they come looking at you as a trusted authority. And so that would be your fastest way to do it. Telling stories by far will be the fastest way to do it because a lot of times it will fall on that emotional aspect of our brain that simply can't resist a good story. Because storytelling has been wired into the DNA generations and generations ago. There was, this was the very first way we learned how to communicate, right? When we saw the first sunrise as a species, the first thing we've done is we went ahead and told a story about that sunrise to a friend, right? Or we drew the sunrise on a, on, a, on a cave wall, right? We did something to tell that story. And, you know, one would argue, and this is a bit of a philosophical argument, but, you know, I do find it to be very, very interesting as a point of view. One would argue that things don't actually happen until the story of that thing happening is actually told. In other words, if you're the only one who sees um, like a situation, scenario, something happening, maybe if you're the only one who sees the robbery, maybe you see how one person robs another, it doesn't actually get acknowledged. So it doesn't happen until that story is being told to other people and until that story spreads. So in other words, your credibility doesn't happen until the story spreads. Your presence doesn't exist like you don't have any presence unless the stories are told okay and the first source of that story should be you and that's okay for that for that story to be told by you and then for that story to be picked up by other people because people have a fascinating trait 
a character trait that uh, helps us marketers market better and pretty much just thrive. And that is people are really good at reaffirming what they already believe and seeking evidence to what they conclude. And when you tell them a story and you tell it in the right way, again, if you want to learn how to tell stories correctly in order to influence, okay, ethically, then you need to go to bridge.igorsolitz.com and check out my course. But if you want to tell, when, when you tell the story the right way, what happens is the person who listens to your story and takes it in, and when that story really hits, starts seeing evidence to what you implanted in their heart on their own, and then start spreading the exact same story to the market. So your customer, after hearing your best story and, and seeing how you live that story, uh, your customer becomes your greatest salesperson simply because they tell your story to others. And that is really, really powerful. Nothing can be more powerful than your customer spreading your stories for you because that actually makes them true so with that said again if you want to learn how to tell stories correctly you definitely want to check out my course at bridge.igorsolids.com and uh, we will be talking more about storytelling and story selling in the future episodes but for now i want to leave you with the idea that nothing is true until the story about that thing is actually told and your name your authority your presence is uh probably the highest rated highest rated trait in your business. In other words, if you strip everything else away and all you've got left is your is your credibility with the marketplace, then the one thing you can always rely on is that you will make sales simply because the marketplace trusts you. So to get that going, you definitely need to learn how to tell more effective stories. So this is Igor Kafitz. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Liz Building Lifestyle. Get access to previous episodes, the transcript of today's show, and exclusive content at our website at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. Also, don't forget to claim your free seat at the traffic workshop I'm conducting this week, where I'm showing how I built a list of 4,331,656 email subscribers without losing money, and how my clients are putting anywhere from 50 to 500 new leads per day on their list at a profit without any list building experience. Just go to igor.cx to claim your free seat now.